Hi and welcome to my playhouse. Today I have this my book. It's a Western Digital external hard drive and I bought a few of these back in the days because that was the cheapest way to get a 4 terabyte hard drive. Get the box, pull the drive out of this box and you had an okay hard drive. I uh, actually funny enough there was I think there were Seagate hard drives inside of these which is really weird for a Western Digital product to um, to deliver me Seagate hard drives. I'm not sure. Might have been Western Digital drives. But well, I've kept the cases for them because it would be pretty awesome to put a different hard drive in here. And in one of my last videos, I tried that. I um, have this 10 terabyte hard drive here that I wanted to put in a cage. And um, I actually put it in this cage here, which I think this is from a 3 terabyte hard drive uh, eventually. But it's only USB 2, so <clears throat> although it, it was working, it's a bit slower. And this one should be able to do USB 2 and 3, so that would be better. Um, but it didn't work. When I put the 10 terabyte hard drive in here, well, it showed up as a 4 terabyte hard drive, which might have something to do that this is restricted to a 4 terabyte hard drive. I have no idea, but I have a lot of awesome subscribers and one of you guys linked me to a site where they actually went in and modified this little stupid tiny print. Where did it go? There. This little print that is in here. One of the chips on this little board uh, just has to be disabled and it will forget everything about being a my book. And, um, also all the restrictions that it has on it. My print is um, not exactly like the one that they modified in that case, but I thought we would just try this anyway. I don't trust this enough to, uh, to modify it and put it directly on a rather expensive 10 terabyte uh, hard drive. So we will test it with something else first. Make sure that it's not totally dead. So. Let's go to the computer and see um, what it does right now. So here we have an Hitachi hard drive and this one is a two terabyte and it's back from 2010, so rather old. So we'll put that uh, this way and we will mount this little print board. It goes in this way, there. And we will plug it in the computer first and then we will prod. It's a, it's one of these withered USB 3 connections. We'll plug that in and then we'll put some power on the hard drive. Boom, boom. And that far so good. So this one is not needed. It's just clutter up my workspace. This one, get that out of you as well. So, so on the computer, we now have this new drive, I haven't called it anything, it's just a new drive. We have that over here as well. It's a, it's a 1862 gigabyte in NTFS drive. And down here, it shows up as a Western Digital MyBook 1140 USB device. Um, and it works. I did copy some files over to it. Uh, just some of my test files and it was even fairly quick. It copied with about 124 megabytes per second. Uh, we could just do a bit of a test on that. So, let's try that. Um, I copied this data over to it. So if I on my local SSD delete those there, I will just copy them back from the drive here. Well, they copy over with about a hundred and well, 125, 128 megabytes per second, which is pretty good. So that shows that this two terabyte drive, that shows up without a glitch, no problem whatsoever. And it's a Hitachi drive that came out of a sand. So, well, nothing is wrong with that, but the print wouldn't take the 10 terabyte drive. So um, that was an issue. 
I'm not gonna put the 10 terabyte drive on there right now. I'm a bit afraid what it would suggest if it wanna format that or do anything dangerous, damaging. Okay, we moved down into the basement and I've mounted this little print in a vise, I think it's called. Um, and you can see there is a big processor over here, or actually it's quite tiny. This is a needle. So a tiny processor here and we have three of these eight pin uh, chips and one of these should contain the restrictions and as far as I could see on the other documentation that one was called U2 U2 so I'm guessing that it's this one it does not have the same text on it as it had in, in that but it's the same chip-ish and it's on the same board and they've called it the same thing and what they did was that they disabled power to that chip and the power came in on this uh, number eight leg and there is a little mark on a chip like this and the mark uh, which is over there that marks leg number one and then you count one two three four five six seven eight and this is the lake which is very convenient in a position where we can actually get to it uh, we want to disconnect that you could take some kind of a cutting tool and just remove the lake and everything would be good um, I was hoping to just solder it off the board put a piece of tiny tape underneath it and um, then it would just be disconnected and if this turns out to be absolutely not working I could just connect it again so I'm gonna try that and it's gonna be impossible to film I'm sure That wasn't too bad. So, as you can see, this chip is now, uh, well, it's lifting up one leg. I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape underneath that and we'll go and check um, how it shows up on the computer. We're gonna check it on the two terabyte drive first. And if it looks normal-ish, well, I'm gonna try it on the 10 terabyte. Well, getting that little bit of red tape underneath that leg, well, that was almost the hardest part. So let's go uh, connect this and see uh, if it blows up. Okay, here we are. Let's pop it in. That's gonna be exciting. We will... I should have made this cable longer. Pop in the USB. Pop in some power. Oops. Let's drive it dirty. Spins up and the computer recognizes something. Drive, we don't need that right now. It pops up. Yeah, it sees the hard drive instead of the box. So it's just passing through the disk instead of, you can see that it's an HUA before it was the MyBook stuff thing. So that was exactly the same thing. Uh, let's see what the, if we pop up a drive here, my computer, we do not have a D drive at all, so that's not there, it has the box, it doesn't have the drive, oh, it's unallocated, can we do anything interesting, initialize disk? That definitely means that everything will just go poof and disappear. Mm, good thing I copied things back. So we will try that. There, we'll make a new volume on it. Probably the data is still there. Make a new volume. Okay. We get our volume D over here. 
that's now volume D. Let's try and copy stuff to it, see if there is any change. This is my test files, it's just some ISO files and stuff. There, copy that. It's copying with 124 to 128, okay, 122. So the speed is the same. Okay, that was um, good information. So even though this is working, I don't think I want to do this with my 10 terabyte hard drive because I've already used three to four days copying over six terabytes of data to it. And uh, well, you might say to yourself that, well, on a USB 3, I can do that a lot faster. No, because the USB 2 was not the bottleneck. The iSCSI SAN was actually the bottleneck. So even though I could copy this away from this hard drive a lot faster, I'm not gonna be doing that right now. But when I have copied the data off it, well, it might be fun to try that. But right now, I think I'll just keep this in the USB 2 enclosure to make sure that um, I don't have to copy all that data over again. There's a good chance that this will work. It more or less just passes the drive through, as you can see. So if any of you have any experience with trying a larger hard drive like this, please leave it in the comments below so that um, I can know if it works, if it's worth doing. The ninja trick worked and if you have a hard drive that don't want to show up in one of these boxes, well, you can definitely use that trick to trick it. It's a trickety trick. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye-bye.